and welcome back everybody. This is The Cube, the SiliconANGLE premier video production where we go out to the top tech events to bring you uh, the latest news on trends and, uh, in enterprise IT. Uh, we're here of course at uh, .conf 2012 Splunk's annual user conference uh, in Las Vegas. We're at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. Uh, my name is Jeff Kelly with Wikibon.org and I'm joined with my co-host Jeff Frick from SiliconANGLE. Thank you Jeff. Welcome back everyone. We are really excited to have uh, Guido Schroeder with us, the VP of Products for Splunk. He's been a really busy guy here, uh, not only the last few days at the conference, but also obviously getting these products up to snuff and, and, and getting ready for the show. Uh, Guido, welcome to theCUBE. He tells us he was out early this morning hiking with the team, doing some good team building. So, uh, good morning, we're, Jeff. We're glad you made it back. No, morning, rattlesnake, yes. no rattlesnake bites or uh, <laughs> any, any other uh, mud slides. No, we, we, we are doing well, yeah, so no harm. <laughs> okay, good. So, <laughs> and yeah. I think that's, that's one of the great things at Splunk, yeah, this you know, team building. We want to do something together, and one of the things I really enjoy being with this group. Yeah, that's, it's, it's interesting you bring that up, because uh, you know, we looked up your LinkedIn page. You were at SAP for a long time, yep. like 10 years plus, and now you're at a, a, a new place, a new company, a new industry uh, space. So how's that been? It's, it must be exciting. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been in the U.S. now for 12 years. Yeah, I actually came to Palo Alto end of '99. Was supposed to be initially just for for one year as a kind of fellowship with SAP, and then we appended a year and appended a year. And you know, I was often thinking, you know, maybe join a typical Silicon Valley startup type of company, and I passed on a couple of opportunities. And I've been for 15 years at SAP, and I thought, you know, maybe it's almost too late yeah, to get anywhere else. And uh, so when I, when I got to know then uh, Godfrey and, and Eric earlier this year, uh, it took me a little while to get my arms around what Splunk is really doing and completely understand the opportunity. But once I saw it, I thought, this is really something I want to do. And, you know, then I made a decision, yeah. And I, I don't regret it. So I'm with the company now for half a year. And it has been a blast. It's a, it's a great team. I enjoy Godfrey's leadership and the rest of the management team. You know, it's, a, it's a fantastic crew. And also the team that Eric inherited me. So, I mean, you saw yesterday during uh, the keynote that we did a kind of handover yeah, right. of the torch from Eric to myself. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate the trust that, that they are giving me. And, um, I mean, you heard what we are up to. We want to grow the company quite a bit. Right. And it's going very well. I mean, in the moment, the company is growing, you know, 60, 70 percent revenue year over year. And uh, I think they wanted to have a guy who has seen a large company before and operated at a sure. larger scale. And that's what I did at SAP. I had a global organization distributed over seven countries, more than 800 people. And I think that's certainly a valuable background and experience that can mm -hmm. I bring out to Splunk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. So I'm eager to get your take as a newcomer to Splunk and having spent a long time mm -hmm. at SAP and kind of in that enterprise software world, how do you see Splunk, is Splunk disrupting, and not just Splunk, but big data in general, Splunk specifically, is it disrupting the traditional business intelligence data warehouse uh, industry? And if so, how? Because it, it, it seems like it is certainly, big data is a different approach. It's more flexible, it's, it's uh, more extensible versus a little more structured yeah. world of the enterprise data warehouse we're, we're used to. And coming from SAP with their business objects portfolio, yeah. portfolio, I thought you might have an interesting perspective. Yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I didn't stumble across Splunk in my past life at all. Yeah, and if you study the BI quadrants yeah, or forest waves, I don't think you would see Splunk showing up in any of, of the BI coverage. Yeah, I don't think the mark, market sees us really in that space right now. We are seen in some other areas like enterprise security, for example, and IT operations, application management. Yeah. Um, and Splunk is certainly very different. I mean, one of the things I found very differentiating from what most of the BI companies are doing is that we don't have this notion of a big modeling effort mm -hmm. when you start to use a tool. I mean, most of the BI companies, they're required to define some sort of schema, yeah, a cube and structure of the data. And that is a notion I think that Splunk really doesn't have. I mean, typically what we do when we come into a customer, we identify what data is interesting for the customer, we suck it into our system, uh, and then you can answer pretty much whatever question you have after it, but it doesn't require this big modeling uh, effort. So that's one big differentiating area. The other, I would say, key difference 
is the viral nature of the product, yeah, and that's something I, you know, probably a lot of the big guys like SAP and IBM with Cognos, yeah, and whoever has a large BI portfolio would like to get to is a small product that is, you know, easy to download, easy to implement, and with a very small footprint. And I think this is really something that Splunk got absolutely right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you go to our website, and that's where most of the customers actually start, right? Yeah, they download our free product and start in a, in a small department with a project, and then at some point in time, they understand it and see other use cases and grow it. Yeah, and I think that is really relatively easy possible with, with Splunk, but not with many of the other enterprise products that you find out in the market. Yeah, yeah. it seems to be an, uh, an, an increasingly successful way to go to market, to have that, that way for customers to do trial. We did some work with Atlassian mm -hmm. in the past, and they have a similar thing where you can, it's not free, it's $10 that goes to charity, which is a brilliant, a brilliant twist on the theme, but you get in, you try it, people learn it, and they do get this viral uh, nature as, as more and more people get exposed to the application, use the application, and, and, and people and look you know, at the shoulder actually, game, can I do that? It's actually something that uh, the founders did very deliberately. Uh, so I sat down with, with Rob Das and Eric uh, some time ago, and they told me all those stories here, how they started. Uh, and I mean, it's kind of interesting what they did. I mean, first of all, they really took some time off to understand what is an interesting problem to solve. I mean, they had a couple of startups that they did before, which right. didn't go that well. And then I think they sat down, you know what, we really want to go after something that you could make money with, yeah, and that solves a, a really tangible problem. And I think they spent a couple of months to just interview companies, and then they heard, hey, wow, yeah, there's, there's really one you know, kind of reoccurring, recurring pattern once they spoke to all these different companies that they have really a hard time to understand, you know, what is the information that is hidden in those logs and other data sources that companies have in their IT infrastructure. And it just turned out to be damned hard for those companies to get really to that information. Yeah, that was one thing. And the other thing I believe they realized is that they wanted to change the way how this stuff is sold. Yeah, I think they had an experience how enterprise software is sold. Yeah, right. it was a long sales cycle mm -hmm. and a sales executive yeah, that needs to build relationships and whatever. Right. And uh, I think they wanted to do it just in a different way. You know, let, let the customer or people at the customer do the selling themselves. Yeah, and that's how it typically works today. So a customer starts, they download the product, get started with free, and then they scale up at some point right. in time, and they actually do the selling for us, yeah, which I think makes it a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. we had the Target guys on the Cube earlier, and that's exactly what happened with them. One of them had a yeah. little project, downloaded Splunk, solved the, solved the project, and what they said, they've only been using Splunk since November. It's already taken off, and they've got initiative after initiative after initiative uh, planned yeah. out that they want to they accomplish yeah. with the product. And you know, I, I think one of the other things yeah, that, that probably Rob and, and Eric and, and the early crew got right, let's say uh, we're looking from the very beginning at very concrete use cases, yeah, and we're very close to the customer. And from my past experience, I would say that that is really the way how you can innovate the best. Mm. Yeah, sit down with the customer, understand the problem, and then co-innovate with the customers. And I think that that's really what the company did for a long time, and we try to continue to do. Have an ear on the customer, understand the specific problem, and a lot of the things that you see now coming also into core Splunk and the core product I think are all driven really by what our customers are telling us. So I'm interested to hear about how, from a product perspective, yeah. you know, the idea that uh, Splunk often starts off in the, in the data center and then moves to other use cases in, in particular customer circumstances, what kind of pressure does that put on the product team uh, to, to keep the product flexible enough to expand to use cases that you've never really thought of before and that your customers yeah. are coming up with? You know, I mean, I spoke also yesterday in the keynote about it. I think with Splunk growing up now, yeah, I think we become a lot more aware, and, and this is really happening when you look at how our customers are using the product. I think we become more and more really a platform yeah, that addresses a broad range of use cases. And yesterday in the keynote, I showed a little diagram. I mean, either you call it virtual circle of platform or flywheel. And, you know, I think there are a couple of principles that we need to go after and look at to make this a solid foundation and a, and a viable platform, yeah. So I spoke about reuse, and that's what we are doing now for a while, that we take the same architecture, the same stack, 
and use it across this large spectrum of different use cases, yeah? whether it's application management, IT operations, enterprise security, PCI compliance, web analytics, and what have you. And I think this reuse principle allows us really, I would say, to focus on making this, optimizing this platform, yeah? optimizing the elements of the platform, the indexer, the search, the visualization, and I think this wouldn't happen if we would build off, build one of type of solutions and applications all the time. So right. I think that is very important. Then I think we learned a lesson about the product needs to be more modular, you know, because we can't do everything. Customers find you know different things that they want to do with it, and and that's where we started now to open it up, right? Right. Yeah. So we make the product more modular, and one big push. I mean, we are talking a lot about this uh, during the conference is our developer interfaces yeah, that we have added to it. And one, one of the things that I liked very much about Splunk from a, I would say, a, a architectural perspective, yeah, is that they kept it very clean, the design, in terms of having a REST API between the core engine and the consumption. So all the UIs that are built on the engine are sitting on this REST API. And what we have done now with the, the SDKs, that we kind of just put a language specific wrapper on top of the REST API that was already there. Yeah. And so we have now a number of SDKs available for Java, JavaScript, Python, there is one in PHP that is in the makings and we will add to that yeah, to just make it very easy to consume for developers in whatever programming language environment they are sitting. But that's another example yeah, of, I would say, how this experience of, of growing now, growing up, um, you know, drives, I would say, new things that we are doing in the architecture. Uh, open it up for consumption by developers, uh, making it more modular. Uh, we are also going after more, I would say, interoperability and integration with the different applications because, I mean, if you look at what our customers are doing, you know, when, when they start to get bigger, these things don't exist in a, in a silo. Yeah? They don't do just, you know, IT operations, but it's all connected. Yeah? They need to look for their infrastructure, they need to look for the applications. They also need to go after enterprise security. And you have seen yesterday in the keynote some examples. Yeah, Will, Will Hayes uh, spoke about it, how these things are kind of all connected together. And I think now as a platform, yeah, we can do this. Right. And, and th that's really exciting yeah, right. to, I would say, mix this much, much bigger and, and get a lot more impact. Really interesting. Uh story about you know having the real discrete use cases and having mm -hmm. a really easy way to try and buy and yeah. use but at the same time uh, architecting for a platform play for down the road when, when the big you know this, as Dan just said the data fabric trying to be the data fabric for the enterprise and being able to parallel track those and then of course just it seems to be the what everyone wants to do now is then to ex extend your capability through a community with the yeah. partner apps and, yeah. and enable them yeah. to extend it in ways yeah. that you guys and your team haven't even thought of or you know, a very specialized use case yeah. or whatever. You know, I mean, one, one interesting thing, and, and you can hear Godfrey Sullivan, our CEO, talk a lot about that. Maybe the biggest problem we have at Splunk right now is to decide what we are not doing, yeah, because right, there are so right. many ideas and customers come come to us, and, and I think that that's also part of my role now, to do a proper prioritization exercise with the team and say, okay, with our capabilities that we have right now, these are the things that we are going after for the next year. It's a pretty agile shop. I mean, this is mm -hmm. also something I like. Right. Yeah, I mean, we are not making, you know, grand two-year, three-year plans. Sure, we have a strategy and also a long-term strategy, but we execute in a fairly agile way. So, pick the top things from the backlog and then execute very well. And I mean, this is also impressive, um, you know, how the team is actually executing. So, it's a very well-run shop, um, you know, that produces a lot of, I would say, rock-solid software every, every year. And you have seen the pipeline here at the conference, right? right. I mean, for, for the size of the company and, and, and the engineering organization, uh, you know, I'm proud and I was also impressed when I came in about the magnitude here yeah, of what the team is doing. Mm -hmm. So enterprise scale, big data story, we do a lot of visualization, we have this broad spectrum of applications yeah, which is really rich in a, in a lot of different areas that require also quite a bit of domain skill. Uh, and then we you know, just launched two weeks ago our cloud-based product, Storm. Right. right. So there's a lot of stuff going on for, for the size of the company, and I think we need to make sure <laughs> that we are not trying to swallow too much. Sure. <laughs> right. Well, you spoke of priorities, so maybe you could uh, 
clue our audience, clue our audience into what those priorities are for you for the next six, 12 months? I mean, what are the real, I guess, what are the real challenges uh, for Splunk over the next year, and what are the priorities you're focused on? So what's going on right now, um, I would say are two big things. Number one is continuing our scalability and performance story. I mean, you heard a couple of announcements here during the conference. Yeah. So uh, index uh, clustering, yeah, which I think gets us really to the next level in terms of resiliency. Uh, and then we have also you know, some of these acceleration features, yeah, report acceleration we spoke about. And that story will continue. Yeah. We have a couple of, I would say, follow-ons to, to these stories in the next release, which will come next year. So, uh, you know, there is a tradition at Splunk to name our releases after ponies. This one we just shipped was the Ace release. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard the story, but... No, what is our... the story of the pony? I think it's worth, because I keep seeing I... ponies all over the place. There were ponies at the party last night. There was like virtual ponies in 2012 <laughs> teleporting from, uh, I don't know where they were teleporting from. It became the mascot and, you know, I'm, I'm not the historian of the company. <laughs> I'm not sure if I tell it completely correctly, but as far as I recall, you know, Eric wanted to do, and, and he has a very generous soul and always cares about people, yeah, he wanted to do something good and asked one of the developers, hey, what can I do for you? I think the crew has worked very hard. And he said, you know, can you get me a something pony? Yeah, and <laughs> a week later, he actually brought a big mascot pony <laughs> into the office and it kind of became the mascot of the, uh, of the company. And, you know, now the releases are named after after these ponies. Um, I think it must be something for children and a toy. So there, there is Ace. The next one is uh, uh, B. Uh, what is it? Uh, sure. Bubbles. 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 The, bubbles. the next one oh, is Bubbles, it. and after that comes Cupcake. Interesting. <laughs> well, what's what's funny? I think actually it was a lo it was a much uh, well thought out plan to get you to join them because if anyone's ever been to SAP in Palo Alto, there's more ponies and horses around that office building than I think there are anywhere else mm -hmm. in the peninsula, off of uh, Page Mill Road. But yeah. it's been great. Uh, we're here with Guido Schroeder, the senior vice president of products for Splunk. Uh, thank you really a lot for your insights. It's, it's, it's really fun to hear your enthusiasm, having been at a big, mature ERP company and to come into a startup environment and be so enthused and be, you know, but still back in the enterprise, changing the world and changing the way a lot of people are doing their business. Oh, I don't regret the move, yeah. And uh, Splunk is hiring. So <laughs> if anybody else wants to join us, we will probably hire into engineering next year about 50 people uh, in the Bay Area. And uh, I can tell you, it's a, it's a fun place. It's interesting stuff we are working on, yeah, and a fantastic team to join. So if you're ever contemplating, you know, also making a move, check out Splunk. I think it's, a, it's an excellent place. Thanks. Well, he's not enthusiastic, is he? I mean, come on. <laughs> so here we are. We're going to sign off now. We've got another guest lined up. We'll be back in just a few minutes. We're, again, we're at the Splunk Conf 2012 in beautiful Las Vegas at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. We'll see you in just a few minutes.